I ain't one of y'all peers, I'm a sum of all fears Somebody stronger than me, who that? I'm all ears Cause I'm a master, try to diss and I blast you Any whack MC that steps up is getting plastered Not saying that ain't nothing can do thee But in the rap game, all secondary to me The world's most greatest hip hop scene You obsolete, you cannot compete But rappers keep wishing to be in my position No good and damn well, there ain't no competition I'm the king and you better respect it All I need is Beyonce and a Rockefeller necklace They remind me when they try to have Ali enlisted If I ever wasn't the greatest, I must have missed it How when your lyrics weren't written by a stranger Ooh, I'm the greatest, you just the latest oh, One of the illest that you ever know Rock steady, baby, you will step us Don't smash your foundation in the pebbles I help the game, it ain't help me I'm Top five, dead or alive, and that's just off one LP Forget about your top five, try and top mine Take shine like a got my iron and you're good So in the ring, you cannot win The top ten become nine dead if I ever decide to hop in Welcome back to the biggest hip-hop tournament in history, in which we determine the greatest rapper of all time, given a list of 1024 rappers in total. In order to achieve this goal, I created 32 brackets and let my fans vote for their favorites. Just like in the previous episodes, I will give my thoughts on the results of the voting. This video is the fourth part of the 5 episode series and covers bracket 25 to 32. If you haven't seen the results of the previous brackets yet, then make sure to check out part 1 to part 3. Anyway, let's take a look at the results. Bracket number 25. Ski Master Slump God over Killer Sin. Terrible take in my opinion. Killer Sin could wrap circles around him. He not only lost his voice, delivery, his overall ability to make exciting and enjoyable music, but he fell off so hard that it's very unlikely for him to recover, dropping trash ass songs and projects for like half a decade now. He's honestly just a big disappointment, I had high hopes for him. Soldier Boy over Uncle Murder. Unbelievable. I mean, don't get me wrong, Uncle Murder is not a great rapper, like, at all. Mediocre at best, but Soldier Boy is a definition of whack, he's always been that way. Chameleonaire over Fujiano. Of course. Big Bang Hang from the legendary Sugar L Gang over Ashniko, one of the most annoying rappers in existence, Scientific over Gichi Sway from Camp Low, agreeable in terms of lyrical complexity and rapping skills. Maybe not in terms of flow, impact and catalog though, cause Scientific died way too early and unfortunately didn't have much of a career. Favio Foreign over Slim Kid Trey from the far side, really? In what world is this walking adlib better than one of the members of the far side? Which, by the way, is up there with the greatest rap groups of all time. While Fabio uses the same flow and sounds the same on every single verse, whether it's on a song or a freestyle. Stepping on weapon drone, big clip, extra long, bow. You step to me, that means you stepping wrong. I come in the spot and I read along. Uh, I take a perk and I get extra strong. Yeah. Snoop Dogg definitely better than Ahmad, Jake Wan, inferior to Hocus 4 Fifth, Chuck D from Public Enemy, of course better than X Rated. David Dix from Clipping, skill-wise superior to Rich Brian, Young Buck over Stevie Stone, same with Yakmo from The Loonies and P.O.S. And of course Method Man is better than Zero. But look at this shit right here. Young Thug over Hitman Hala, one of the best bad rappers ever. I mean, it's not a surprise to me at this point, we've seen this in previous parts of the tournament. You guys don't think much of battle rappers, I get that now. And that whack motherfucker Young Thug has the most delusional stand base ever. After Playboy Cardi, XXXTentacion and Kanye West of course. I can't really name you that many rappers who would get out rapped by Thugga. The gap in skill between them is ridiculous. If we are talking about personal enjoyment, I don't really enjoy any of his music. I don't bump a single Young Thug song, not my cup of tea, just trash to me. Lyrically he's like a 2 out of 10 at best, his delivery is a zero, rapping skills are laughable and his freestyling abilities are embarrassing. Spin house on your bitch, then I let her suck on a little neck. Yeah. On the truth, and them motherfuckers keep moving, I know I'm the best. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing I can praise him for except maybe creating melodies. Hitman Hala is like an 8.5 out of 10 in terms of rapping skills. Great punchlines, wordplay, delivery. You can see that he has mastered his craft. Of course, not in every aspect, but for what he does, he's a very deadly MC. We're not talking about production, singing with autotune or mumbling on lean and codeine. We're talking about strictly rapping, grab the mic and kill your opponent either on records or live on stage. 
If you compare their best verses, it's almost laughable that we're wasting time on this. Brother J from X Clan, definitely better than Marlon Craft, and rap god Kanye East, of course superior to Troy F, aka the new Pac. Nigga, it's the second coming of Tupac, it's a new Pac. I go do shows, nigga, everything is different, nigga. You said the second coming of Tupac. Right? Nigga, I said the new Pac. The new pop. I said that's how it feel. Fortnite balls. I'm gay. I like boys. I kidnap autistic kids. Little Mosey is watching. Nigga, it's the second coming of Tupac. It's a new pop. Round two. Soldier Boy eliminated and Ski Master Slump got in the quarterfinals. Camillionaire, of course, better than Big Bang Hank, who might have been the first lyric biter in rap history. Favio Foreign, not better than Scientific. Come on now. Only his production is superior, but rapping wise, it's not even debatable. Snoop Dogg, of course, better than Jake Wan. Same with Chuck D and David Diggs. Also with Young Buck and Yuck Mouth. And Method Man is, of course, better than Wack as Young Thug. <laughs> the last one hurt my soul. Brother J is an OG, one of the best conscious rappers ever, with a unique style, flow, and his music overall was just one of a kind. Kanye East, on the other hand, is just a meme. Some guy who raps random suspect lyrics on live streams. I added him just for fun. Didn't know that he would ruin the tournament. But it was great to see that he could beat whack ass Troy F. I just hope nobody voted for him thinking it's Kanye West. Because Kanye East is obviously better. Hi Kanye, let my ass off, you a legend garb, I love feet, age is a number, kiddo, balls, balls, I rap ocean water, big nigga balls. Round 3. Ski Mask in terms of flow, definitely better than Chameleonair, but I prefer Chameleonair's music, Ski Mask grew off me heavily. Snoop Dogg finally got Fabio the hell out of here, Chuck D far better than Young Buck. And Method Man, thank God, prevented Kanye East from causing any further damage to the tournament. In the semifinals, we had Snoop Dogg winning against Ski Master Slump God. Definitely agree with this one, but I'm not so sure about Method Man over Chuck D. Don't get me wrong, Method Man is a dope MC. He's better than Chuck D when it comes to vocabulary, punchlines, wordplay, and flow in general. But Chuck D had far more meaningful content in his raps. He was more political and socially conscious than every other MC in history. He's the face of political and socially conscious hip-hop. Public Enemy was truly one of a kind, you couldn't really compare them to any other group, cause they had their own lane. Chuck D had a powerful voice and was almost like a history teacher in his raps. If we're comparing Public Enemy with the Wu-Tang Clan, then I would of course pick the Wu-Tang Clan. But I don't think Method Man's solo catalog is up there with Public Enemy's discography. Chuck was the MC of the group, the main guy, basically the voice of it. Method Man, on the other hand, was one of the many ingredients, but probably the most popular one. Unlike Chuck, who didn't hear him on almost every record of the group. So Chuck D was probably more important to Public Enemy than Method Man was to the Wu-Tang Clan. But battling-wise, I would definitely go with Meth, though. I don't think Chuck could outrap him. So you could make an argument for both. Just said that Chuck didn't make it to the top 64. In the finals, you picked Method Man over Snoop Dogg, which I definitely agree with. So Snoop is now in the top 64 and Meth in the top 32. Bracket 26, Chef G, definitely not better than Sarok, neither skill nor music wise. Eric Sermon from EPMD, of course Leak Set of Babyface Ray. MCA from the BC Boys, also better than Sampa the Greats. Shine vs Lil Debbie, I mean they're both trash now, but at least Shine made some enjoyable music early on in his career, even though he was trying to sound like Biggie. Young M.A.'s music grew on me over time, Rowdy Rebel on the other hand is not my cup of tea. Cold 187 from Above the Law, of course better than Young Dro, same with Kumo D and Unknown P. Lord Infamous from 3-6 Mafia and Schooly, Merson Not a Wick. Black Thought from the legendary group The Roots, of course worlds better than Wi-Fi's Funeral. Same with Cool Keith from Ultramagnetic MCs and No Cap, but Daddy Mac from Criss Cross should have lost to Illogic. Highly disagree with you on this. Both members of Criss Cross were kids when they started, and were never really taken serious as rappers as they had little to no lyrical ability. Illogic on the other hand started off as a freestyle battler. He became a great lyricist who not only impressed with his sophisticated rhyme schemes but also with his deep and poetic verses. K Camp is not on the level of Mr. Liff from The Perceptionists. I mean, skill-wise it's not even close, K Camp can only make songs about money and women. Mr. Liff on the other hand is a lyricist, he can be poetic, spit dope freestyles and drop hard punchlines. 
Anyway, agree with Big Sean over RD, don't care for Asut and Must Wolf, both mediocre and boring to me. And finally we have passed from De La Soul over Dom Kennedy, definitely agree here. Round 2, Eric Sermon far better than Chef G, no explanation needed. MCA also better than Shine, but Young MA is not better than Colt 187. She can't drop an album on the level of Livin' Like Hustlers, Black Mafia Life and Uncle Sam's Curse. Lyrically she's also a little overrated in my opinion, people think she's one of the best female lyricists, her rhyme schemes are nursery level at best, but she does have some clever punchlines once in a while. Cool Mo D definitely better than Lord Infamous, Black Thought, Merce, not even debatable. Same with Cool Keith and Daddy Mac, Big Sean and K Camp, and also with Pass and A Soot. Round 3, Eric Sermon vs MCA. This one is debatable, but I think I would pick Eric Sermon. His lyricism is a little more advanced and his music is slightly better in my opinion. Cool Mo D of course better than Young M.A. Black Thought superior to Cool Keith, both catalog and skill wise. Big Sean over Pass is laughable though. Big Sean's music is generic compared to De La Soul. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. They played an important role in the evolution of jazz rap and alternative hip hop. And they also impacted conscious hip hop. So their lyrics are definitely more meaningful than anything Big Sean has ever put out. Discography wise, nothing Big Sean has ever released comes close to 3 feet high and rising, De La Soul is dead, Balloon Mind State, or Stakes is High. Sean's catalog is skippable and a waste of time in comparison. Skill wise I would also give it to Pass. Big Sean has a low tier vocabulary and very repetitive and meaningless lyrics. Pass on the other hand is in the upper echelon in those categories. And that's why I'm kinda disappointed to see that he got eliminated so early. But anyway, in the semi-finals Eric Sermon defeated Cool Mo D by one vote. I personally think Mo D is the superior MC, in terms of lyricism, technical skills, flows, vocal performance and of course delivery as Eric Sermon has a lisp. And Mo D also could lyrically defend himself quite well. He produced some classic diss tracks back in the day against LL Cool J. And he also had a little subliminal back and forth with Big Daddy Kane. He has a fast, aggressive and wordy rapping style that changed hip hop forever. Especially after his battle against Busy B, when he demonstrated his capabilities as an MC. After beating Busy B in 1981, rap slowly started to evolve from disco music that didn't have much substance to more meaningful and lyrically sophisticated rhymes. And in the second match of the semi-finals we had Black Thought and Big Sean competing. Black Thought is definitely superior. I don't think anyone who knows hip hop would disagree with me on this. And in the end we had Black Thought winning the whole bracket. Definitely agree that he's the most skilled MC out of the 32 participants. He got himself a seat in the top 32 and Eric Sermon made it to the top 64. Bracket 27. Mike ranked over Violent J from Insane Clown Parsi. I'm not the biggest ICP fan, never liked their music, but always respected them for being unique. Although I would still consider them trash and corny. Big Daddy Kane vs Boom Gang. Of course we're going with Kane. Daddy O from Statsasonic over Young Bands. And Mad Skills is also better than Riff Raff. Armani Caesar vs Queen Pen is definitely debatable. But I would probably pick Armani Caesar. Very close though. Schooly D, the pioneer of gangster rap, of course better than I Am Dochi. Same with Daz Dillinger from The Dog Pound and DDG. AKA Mr. Today's rappers are 10 times better than the rappers back in the today. English motherfucker, do you speak it? Yes! <laughs> Highly disagree with the next ranking. Louis Logic, way more advanced in terms of rapping skills than KSI. But of course, with a fan base of 23 million people, I didn't really expect anything else. KSI's music is trash in my opinion. Agree with Tech 9 over Scotty ATL. Also with your ranking for Big Poo from Little Brother and Blackboy JB. Same with BG Knockout and G Depp. And also with your ranking for Scarib from Living Legends and Wack Ass French Montana. AKA the guy who got outshined by Lil Pump. AKA the only person in hip hop that can name 5 French Montana songs without features. Anyway, MC Shan from the Juice Crew beating Dave is understandable in terms of status, impact and importance to the culture. Not a huge fan of Dave's music, probably because of the accent. MC Shan on the other hand is a legend in the game 
and was part of the Bridge Wars during the mid to late 80s, which arose from a dispute over the true birthplace of hip-hop. It was a very important rivalry in the culture, and Shan, being part of it, guaranteed him a whole chapter in the metaphorical book of hip-hop. Dave, on the other hand, probably wouldn't even get mentioned. Melly Mel from the Furious Five, worlds better than Diggy Simmons, Capital C's, more skilled than Fat Pat, and Elzai from Slum Village can wrap circles around pretty much everybody with the word baby in his name, even though Sada Baby feels like he's a better rapper than Eminem. Round 2, Big Daddy Kane of course takes the W against Mike, Daddy O won against Mad Skills, Scooty D against Queen Pen, Daz Dillinger against KSI and Tech 9 against Big Poo. I agree with all of these rankings, but the last one is debatable. Big Poo has a lot more content and meaning in his raps compared to the average Tech 9 record that is in most cases centered around syllables and fast flows alone. I personally enjoy Big Poo's music more, but when we're talking about technical skills and who would win in a battle, I would definitely agree that Tech 9 is superior. BG Knockout vs Scarab is also debatable music-wise, but when it comes to rapping skills, Scarab is far more advanced in my opinion. MC Shan winning against Melly Mel is mind-blowing to me. Mel, for some people, is the greatest rapper of all time, especially for those who have witnessed him in his prime. He's been rapping since 1978 and changed hip-hop forever with the song The Message, which is actually one of the first conscious hip-hop records in history. His raps were ahead of its time. He made anti-drug songs like White Lines and even won rap tournaments at one point. If it wasn't for Melly Mel, hip-hop probably wouldn't have advanced the way it did. MC Shen was important too, but I would say not on the level of Melly Mel. But much respect to both of these legends. Anyway, Capital Steez was not on the level of Elzai, I'm sorry. Steez was great, although not as great as people make him out to be. But Elzai is superior in every aspect of rapping. And his music is also more enjoyable to me. Not just his work with Slum Village, but also his solo stuff. Round 3. Agree with Big Daddy Kane over Daddy O. Daz over Schooly D is debatable. Impact wise definitely Schooly D, music and skill wise probably Daz. Tech 9 definitely better than BG Knockouts, MC Shan over Capital Steez. I would say Steez was probably more advanced in terms of skills, but MC Shan was more important to the culture and also made better music in my opinion. Anyway, in the semi-finals we had Big Daddy Kane taking out Daz Dillinger and Tech 9 defeating MC Shan. And in the finals we had Kane defeating Tech 9, which is more than agreeable. Meaning Kane is now in the top 32 and Tech 9 in the top 64. Bracket 28, Baby Keem vs King Magnetic. I would probably go with King Magnetic, cause Baby Keem has one of the worst deliveries in hip hop. I can't name you a single song of him that I genuinely enjoyed. Hate his baby voice, his flow, his overall style. Army of the Pharaohs at least made enjoyable music. King Magnetic is lyrically superior, doesn't sound naggy or nerve wracking like Baby Keem, and also doesn't come off as a high pitched low budget version of Kendrick Lamar. And by the way, Kendrick also ghost wrote for Baby Keem on the album The Melodic Blue. Anyway, I would also put Esoteric over Wale, cause Wale is a definition of mid, boring, uninteresting, fake deep and corny. If hip hop was a TV show, then Wale would be one of the most popular, boring filler characters. Esoteric is lyrically superior and also music wise. He's part of the duo 7L and Esoteric, Zarface, Army of the Pharaohs and the Demigods. Wale has yet to release a song that I genuinely like. Guru from Gangster, 100% better than Young and Ace. Jeezy vs MC Juice, I mean rapping wise it's not even close. I don't think there's anyone who thinks Jeezy is a great lyricist or somebody who can lyrically defend himself in a battle. Exactly. His lyrics were plain and generic. And the same also applied to his overall content and song concepts. But of course music and impact wise you have to give it to Jeezy. Even though most of his music is repetitive, he did have some hits. MC Juice on the other hand will probably be forgotten about in the next few decades. So yeah. I personally would have picked Mac Maul over Vic Mensa. Cause Mac Maul made the better music in my opinion. Mac Dre vs Mike from Chaotix. Both made dope music, but Mac Dre is a legend a very influential figure in Bay Area hip hop. But he wasn't really known to be a wordsmith or an impressive lyricist. Mike is far superior in that regard. 
But of course, Mac Dre is more important to the culture. Young Z from The Outsiders vs AC Alone from Freestyle Fellowship is debatable in my opinion. I'm a fan of both, but AC Alone is probably superior in terms of rapping skills. Jada Kiss vs Lord Tariq. Of course, we gotta go with Jada. XXX Tentacion vs Sirius Jones. Definitely Sirius Jones. He would have lyrically dismantled him if they ever rapped together. He's far more advanced in every aspect of rapping. Freestyling, punchlines, schemes, metaphors, wordplay, vocabulary, and of course flow in general. He won 12 consecutive battles before battling MC Jin, who was the former Fight Club King, which made him become MTV's all-time Fight Club champion. And since then he has battled some of the best lyricists in battle rap. Like for example Murder Mook, Math Harfa, Charlie Clips, DNA, Daylight, Arsenal and Disaster. If X was still alive, he would get bodied by all of them if they ever competed. And his discography is also trash in my opinion. It's not just his rapping skills that are lacking. I can't really make a single argument for him. It's not even debatable. Anyway, Gino XL worlds better than Snot. Also agree with speech from Arrested Development over Redman. Same with your ranking for Slang Ton from The Outsiders and Hot Boy. But Barbie Schmurder is definitely not better than Blast. I mean Barbie had like one or two hits before he snitched on himself I mean. After that, zero. I said he fell off and was done with hip hop. But most people felt like he will have a bigger comeback than 6 9 and even Tupac. And now that he's finally out, what did we get? How you gonna be talking shit and fall off, nigga? If you gonna talk shit, nigga, you better at least come with another hit, nigga. Them niggas fell off. Bobby Schmurder is hot trash, let's keep it real. MF Doom vs Don Q. Of course we gotta go with Doom. And I'm surprised that you voted for Russ over Car. He's one of the corniest and most uninteresting rappers of the past decade. Skill-wise mediocre, trash music and trash delivery. Car doesn't have the best production, but lyrically is superior to Russ on every level. And you don't cringe with your entire body when you're listening to him. I also love some of his creative song concepts and schemes, like on Off The Record, where he's rapping about his backstory while referencing 64 classic hip-hop albums and incorporating the titles into the story. It's something that I don't expect from a rapper like Russ. So yeah, I would have definitely given this round to Car. And lastly we have The Game vs Young Dolph. The Game, even though he's over 38 and still rapping, Young Dolph was never a match for him. Neither catalog nor skill wise. Even if he fails to do shady numbers. I'm gonna do shady numbers, I'm riding my own dick. Round 2. Two of the most boring rappers going head to head on who can get on my nerves the most. I'm not a fan of either one of them, but I have listened to both, have wasted my time with both, and now I regret it. But at least Baby Keem's music got a little bit of reaction out of me. Wale's songs are worse than elevator music. On the other hand, we have to consider Keem's use of riders. Guru vs Jeezy. Of course I gotta go with Guru. Gangsta is one of the most legendary duos ever. Definitely agree with Young Z over Vic Mensa. Same with Jadakiss and Mac Dre. But the next one is just delusional. XXX Tentacion stands really need to check out more than just X and the 10 rappers that sound just like him. Chino XL is a lyrical beast with way better music than X. He beats him on every level. Like I said in a previous video, X was talented in one or two things but not necessarily a great rapper overall. When it comes to expressing emotions on records, you have to give him credit for being able to touch so many hearts of teens who can relate to him. That's a talent. I mean, he was an emo rapper after all. But aside from that, he wasn't really a great rapper. All of his albums are trash to me, and lyrically he was mediocre at best. I still get death threats for not being a fan of him. They want me to acknowledge that he's the GOAT, a legend. But guess what? You don't become a legend by just passing away. As harsh as it may sound. Bro, I'm better than Tupac, bro. Please don't compare me to him. Please don't compare me to him. Please don't. And instead of talking out of your ass and claiming that you're better than Pac, like most whack rappers these days, Gino XL actually battled Pac at one point on records. They were dissing each other and beefing. Gino XL could lyrically defend himself quite well. I mean, he's a wordsmith. Now imagine X battling Pac. That would be the saddest and shortest emo career in history. X doesn't have the catalog and was never a top tier lyricist or technically skilled in general. He had a few talents that I gave him props for in the past, like making catchy hooks, for example on Sad, and picking great beats like the one on Riot. 
But aside from that, I can't give him much praise. Not even top 1000. Gino XL is easily top 50. Agree with Slang Tan over speech from Arrested Development. Same with MF Doom and Bobby Schmurder and The Game and Russ. Round 3. Guru finally got rid of Baby Keem. Jada Kiss took out Young Z. I just feel like I never felt like this before. This is what music is about, and I just feel like really good right now. And the stands once again eliminated another legend. The outsiders made better music than X and were all far more skilled. Slang Tan was one of the people who inspired Eminem. And many people think he got his flow from slang. I actually talked with As Is about this. So you're telling me that a non-lyrical dude who never had a dope punchline or a great album in his life can beat a lyrical beast like Slang Tan in a rap battle? Slang, Gino XL and Sirius Jones are all superior rapping wise. The only thing X might have done better is singing hooks. And finally MF Doom vs The Game. You guys picked Doom and I would have done the same. He was incredible. Semi-finals, Guru from Gangsta vs Jadakiss from The Lux. I think the last time I did a top 50, I had Jadakiss over Guru. Lyrically that's accurate, but music wise I might pick Guru over Kiss. DJ Premier produced most of his records. Jadakiss most of the time didn't have the production that matches his skill level. But in a battle I would probably pick Jada. We saw what he did to 50 Cent and Beanie Siegel. MF Doom vs XXXTentacion. Glad that X is finally out of the tournament. Respectfully. And in the finals we saw Doom defeat Jadakiss. Which I'm happy about, as he's one of my favorite MCs ever. So Doom made it to the top 32 and Jadakiss to the top 64. Bracket 29. Rock him. Ah, I'd rock him one. Beanie Siegel, definitely better than Rich Boy. A plus from Souls of Mischief and Hieroglyphics, superior to One Hit Wonder Kyle. RA the Rugged Man leaks ahead of uninspired autotune abuser Blade from Drain Gang, which is one of the wackest rap groups in history. Hyperpop just sounds terrible to me. I don't like his obnoxious vocal inflections and the distorted sound of it. Lyrically, he's saying even less than Lil Pump. Almost like a drugged up, lean sipping teen who thinks he's the best karaoke singer in history. Trying to express emotions, but in the end it just sounds like incomprehensible, low energy mumbling with autotuned and distorted vocals. But him and the remaining members of Drain Gang still have a cult-like following. Skinny suburban white reddit geeks with braces and curly hair, who have nothing better to do in their lives than to be weird, edgy, toxic and childish on the internet. They don't even like traditional sounding rap music. Boom Bob is trash to them. They only like hip hop when it's a tiny ingredient of their music. It has to be mixed with something else or else they don't care about it. I mean, you can like whatever music you like, but don't send death threats to people who don't share your music taste. I had to deal with thousands of them when I put the entire Drain Gang on my worst rappers of all time list. Not the smartest people on earth, but neither are their favorite rappers. I definitely disagree with T Grizzly over Joel Santana. I don't like T Grizzly's music that much and his cadence is just weak in my opinion. He sounds offbeat on most of his songs. Joel Santana actually made classics with all the other members of Dipset. Skill-wise, he's also superior in my opinion. NF better than one hit wonder Ricky Graham. Isa Gold from the Underachievers vs Goods is debatable. Don't think Isa Gold could outrap him on songs or on stage, but at least he made better music while still having great lyrical content. So again, what are we basing this off? Music or rapping skills? I personally would pick Goods as he checks more boxes for me. ASAP Ferg vs Billy Dance from MOP. I probably would've picked Billy as I prefer his music. He also has better rhyme schemes and lyrics in general. ASAP Ferg is a little repetitive and basic in comparison. Curious, definitely better than Jake Rich. Same with Currency and Lil Zay Osama, Hussein Fadel from The Outlaws and Tiger. Surprising that he got this many votes. Like who the hell could Tiger beat in a rap battle? Is there anyone who's afraid of Tiger's pen game? Tiger! Tiger! Huh? Man, get the fuck out of here, nigga! Anyway, Conway the Machine is definitely better than Lil C's from Junior Mafia. Jo- Really? John C. Why are you doing Mecklemore like this, bro? I mean, he's corny and his songs have barely any replay value. But you didn't have to pick a wrestler over him. A guy who had a cringy battle with a fan 
and dropped one album that nobody goes back to, which surprisingly sold over 1.3 million copies. I don't want to defend Macklemore here, as I'm not a fan of his music either. But as far as rapping skills and hits, he's a few steps above John Cena. You guys disrespected the shit out of him. Anyway, Ghostface Killer, Worlds Better Than Lil Loaded, Montana of 300, rapping wise definitely more advanced than 6 9 but I'm not a big fan of his music. He has yet to drop a song that I genuinely enjoy. 6 9s music can be catchy at times, but there's no denying that he's a whack MC. Ja Rule, definitely better than Asian Doll, even though Eminem stands have more or less damaged his legacy and status in hip-hop. Round 2. Rakim, of course better than Beanie Siegel, also agree with R.A. the Rugged Man over A+. T Grizzly and NF is debatable. NF has one of the smallest vocabularies in hip-hop. Content-wise very repetitive, but his flow, cadence and delivery is superior in my opinion. On the other hand, he is a one-dimensional lyrical miracle rapper that sounds the same on every song. I'm not a fan of T Grizzly's music either, but at least NF has like a handful of songs that I genuinely enjoyed. ASAP Ferg, music-wise I would say better than Isa Gold, agree with Currency over Curious, Conway the Machine over Hussein Fadel, Ghostface Killer over John Cena, and I also share your opinion on Ja Rule and Montana of 300. So far so good. Round 3. Rakim of course has to advance to the next round. RA is an amazing lyricist, but Rakim is the god MC, the top of the food chain in hip-hop. Agree with ASAP Ferg over NF, although I'm not sure if he could defeat him in a battle. Ferg just doesn't have the energy and doesn't really sound like he could eat somebody's ass in a battle. Well, let me tell you something. You might got more cash than me, but you ain't got the skills to eat a nigga's ass like me. NF is yelling in every song, so it would at least sound like he's going in or saying something important. And also hurtful. But then again, he doesn't curse in his raps, so no clue how a battle between those two would look like. Agree with Conway the Machine over Currency and also with your ranking for Ghostface Killer and Ja Rule. I had a hard time getting into Ja Rule's music. Didn't like how he was trying to bite off Tupac's style after he passed. But Ghost, I always been a fan of him and the Wu-Tang Clan. Definitely prefers catalog over Ja Rule's. Where the fuck is the Supreme Clientels, nigga? Where's the Iron Man's, nigga? Where's the Wizard of Poetry's, nigga? Where's your Bulletproof Wallets, nigga? Out of, out of a bunch of albums I did, that's only four shits. You can never play with me, man. Semi-finals. Rakim multiple levels above ASAP Ferg, rapping and music-wise. And also of course in terms of impact, and every other criteria in rap. Ghostface I would say is superior to Conway, both in terms of catalog and rapping. Ghost has an incredible pen game, and could lyrically skin most rappers alive. You can never fuck with my pen, my nigga. My sword, my blade, whatever you want to call it. I'm too nasty for you. This is why the fuck you look up to me. It sound like me. And in the finals we had Rakim over Ghostface Killer. Both phenomenal rappers, top 20 at least. But Rakim is in my personal top 5. Ghost has a better vocabulary and better storytelling in my opinion. But Rakim revolutionized the game with his multi-syllabic compound rhyme schemes and overall in terms of flow, metaphors and punchlines. Ghost wasn't as influential. And music wise I can't really pick one over the other. But overall I would say Rakim is a superior MC. Who gives you the right to even mention my name out your motherfucking mouth? Bro, you done made a mistake, boy. You done fucked up, man. Come on, bro. I wasn't trying to offend you in any way. And we have to learn how to watch what you say. I guess you've never been taught that. Because you're not a real nigga. I mean, my fans have already submitted their votes. It's over. Your fans? Those are my fans first. You know what I'm saying? Fix that shit, nigga. I want now. Bro, what am I supposed to do now? I don't know what the fuck you gotta do, but fix that shit now. Alright man, I will try to fix it. So you're playing with my guy? Don't let me... Don't let me... Hang you from a fucking rope and gut you like a pig, nigga, and leave you out to dry, because that's your done. Bracket 30. Oh shit, I made a mistake in the title. It's supposed to say 30 out of 33. Bro, get your shit together, bro. I want you to enjoy your summer. 
Cause you know a lot of people don't make it through the summer, bro. Andre from Outcasts versus Baby Bash. Now, who do I pick? Anyway, Lil John versus Mickey Fax. You can't be serious. Lil John was the little pump or the soldier boy of his era. He played a huge role in the crunk subgenre, which is basically dance and club music. No lyrical content, just senseless hype music without any form of intelligence involved. Goofballs shouting a bunch of nonsense like Yeah! What? Okay! And that was 90% of his vocabulary, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not even sure if he could lyrically defend himself against Lil Pump or Playboy Cardi. Those two might actually be able to defeat him in a battle. That's how wacky he was. Raskar's definitely better than Sandubi if we're talking about lyricism and overall rapping skills. Jay Dilla from Slum Village was mainly a producer, but he also rapped once in a while. Rapping is not his biggest strength, but he still leaks the head of whack ass Azalea Banks. AKA Miss I dug my dead cat out of a grave, to cook the remains and to wear his bones around my neck. Yellow Wolf, not a better rapper than Festo from Hieroglyphics and Souls of Mischief. He was part of some of the biggest West Coast hip hop anthems like 93 Till Infinity and You Never Knew. Those two songs alone annihilate everything this cornball has ever accomplished. I have yet to hear a dope song by him. He's the stereotypical white boy industry plant who got way more opportunities than basically 99% of the rap game just through his affiliation with Shady. Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony, of course way better than BFB the Pac-Man. Kanye West catalog and impact wise better than Black Milk. Jim Jones vs Mike Geronimo. I mean, Jim Jones was never really a lyricist or anything. Mike Geronimo is far superior in that field. Catalog wise debatable, depending on if we count all the hits he made with Dipset. And he also had a bigger impact on hip hop in general. But on an MC level, I would probably pick Mike Geronimo. Playboy Cardi vs Casanova. Trash vs Mediocre at best. Not a fan of either one of them. Playboy Cardi is way more polarizing and game changing. But on a rapping level I would go with Casanova. At least he doesn't have the vocabulary of a preschooler. To be honest though, I don't really care about him winning this round. Being mid and being trash is very similar if you think about it. Back in the day we didn't even use the term mid, everything was either dope or trash. That's pretty much how I rated things back in the day. Trash, mediocre and everything in between as one of the same category. There are a million ways to determine who's the wackest. That's why none of my worst rappers videos are in order. It's not me saying, hey, I just went through a list of every rapper in the world and here are objectively the 50 worst rappers in existence. No sane person would ever do that amount of research and go through a list of every rapper in the world to find the ones that poison your ears the best, while poisoning your ears listening to every whack rapper in existence. Who in the world would do that? I just take a look at some of the mainstream rappers that I don't like for a large variety of reasons, whether it's the lack of lyrical skills, the delivery, me not liking their music, them being overrated or whatever else comes to mind. Cause guess what, there's always somebody worse than your number one pick. Me putting Wayne on number one for example didn't really mean that he's the worst. I mean I also had Soldier Boy and Slim Jesus in there, who are objectively worse. Just like it says in the description, these lists are not in order. I mainly did it for the shock value, where my channel didn't even have 100 subscribers. And back then I was always trying to piss off snowflakes and stands by calling rappers I didn't like the worst ever. Which again goes back to the method of exaggeration in hip hop. Hyperbole. Trying to get a point across while making exaggerations that are not to be taken literally. Just like when Snoop Dogg called Biggie Wack, ONJ did the same with Nas. When KRS called MC Shan the worst rapper in history, and vice versa. They didn't really mean it that way, but felt like their opponents are inferior and lacking. Just like when Cannabis and LL called each other Wack MCs. It was a completely normal thing to do in the culture. But nowadays people take everything literally, which is kinda sad to see. Every rapper called their enemy the worst in history, and rap fans did the same with artists they don't mess with. I just feel bad for those who still get mad at my lists 6 years later. My fans already know that those lists are outdated. Opinions change after a decade, you know? And so does every artist. I didn't like any of them back then. But there are definitely worse rappers out that you can look for if you have no hobbies. I mean, since the release of those videos, thousands of MCs have emerged that are way worse than the people are named on those lists. Playboy Cardi and Blade for example. Anyway, Mac 10 definitely better than Jay Stone, Consequence also better than Trick Daddy, same with Blue and Kenny Mason, Chub Rock and CJ Fly, Rhapsody and Emil, Slick Rick and Kano, and ASAP Rocky and Player Fly. 
Round 2. Glad that Andre kicked Lil Jon out of the tournament, but I disagree with Jay Dilla over Raskas. Dilla is of course one of the best producers of all time. He's in my personal top 5. That was his profession. Rapping on the other hand was secondary to him. Raskas is a lyrical beast and far more advanced in every aspect of rapping. Busybone of course better than Yellow Wolf, Kanye also better than Jim Jones, but Playboy Cardi is nowhere near Mac 10. Neither rapping nor catalog wise. I don't like Playboy Cardi's music to be honest, aside from a few beats maybe. It's just too repetitive, childish, meaningless and nerve wracking for me. Sound wise also horrible. On his more recent songs he makes use of his baby voice, while occasionally having voice cracks. 30% of what he's rapping is incomprehensible to me. You can say it's a vibe thing, but I just feel stupid listening to it. Nursery rhymes, vocabulary of a 12 year old, no lyrical content, no punchlines, no wordplay, nothing sophisticated or anything worth praising aside from beat selection. But anyway, Consequence is not a better rapper than Blue. Like on no level. Blue is more lyrical and also makes better music in my opinion. Rhapsody vs Chub Rock is debatable. She might be the better lyricist, especially in terms of content and meaning, but Chub Rock's flow and music is just superior in my opinion. ASAP Rocky over Slick Rick is just illusional. Slick Rick is the best storyteller of all time, changed hip hop forever with his The Great Adventures of Slick Rick album. He introduced the art of narrative into hip hop. He would be the narrator of a large variety of stories and the individual characters in them, for which he altered his tone of voice and even his accent at times, to paint vivid pictures in the heads of the listeners and to make the overall story more enjoyable to listen to. Many rappers have studied his rapping techniques to improve their own storytelling abilities. In terms of impact, influence and importance, I would also give it to Slick Rick. He didn't necessarily inspire today's generation of rappers, like ASAP Rocky did, but the generation that inspired them. Music wise it's of course subjective, you could make arguments for both, but it took me a long time to get into ASAP Rocky's music, and I still don't like most of it. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Slick Rick's music stands out more in my opinion. ASAP Rocky is not as versatile content wise and doesn't have the lyrical abilities of a Slick Rick. I mean let's be honest, he ain't rapping about shit. When he first came out we were all making fun of him for being a sloppy and generic lyricist. But he always had great beats. Anyway, Slick Rick should have definitely won this in my opinion. Round 3. Andre vs Jay Dilla. Definitely agree with this one. Andre is superior. Kanye vs Busy Bone. Catalog and impact wise definitely Kanye. Agree with you. And the delusional Playboy Cardi stand base is back at it again. Crowning that one moron who would lose every rap battle, the rap god. Who's the better lyricist, Soldier Boy or Playboy Cardi? Be honest. Consequence is not a top tier rapper or anything, but he's definitely superior in every aspect of rapping. I don't think anyone but Cardi stands would disagree with me. I mean they would pick Cardi over Nas, Jay-Z and Rakim if they ever had the chance to. ASAP Rocky vs Rhapsody is debatable, content wise Rhapsody is superior, but her music is not up to par in my opinion. And just having lyrical content alone is not enough. Rocky's music is far better and he also impacted the culture more. The next round is probably the most shocking one so far. There's no way in hell that Kanye is a better rapper than Andre. We're not talking about who's the better artist or the better producer here. We're strictly talking about rapping. You can't tell me that Kanye can outrap Andre or anyone else. When was the last time he bodied someone on his own song? But, but I'm the best. Kanye is inferior in every aspect, flow, technical skills, multisyllabic rhyming, vocabulary, punchlines, metaphors, wordplay, storytelling, content, freestyles, standout verses, everything that you could think of when it comes to rapping. Catalog wise I probably prefer Outkast's music over Kanye's. But that's of course 100% subjective. Kanye's music was never really my cup of tea, way too soft to my personal taste. I mean you can make an argument that Andre also made pop music back in the day, but he was always more hip hop than Kanye. He was Mr. The South Got Something To Say, the king of southern hip hop that could do pop and rap. But he was actually able to separate those two genres in his music. Kanye's albums on the other hand rarely gave you that hip hop feel. In the beginning, yeah definitely, but most of the time he merged those two sounds and sounded poppy. Most traditionalists and purists never had a high level of respect for him as an MC. Word in the street is he trying to go pop, this shit was whack. Hardcore, no sellout, and you got to stay hard. I thought we had a baby. Oh no, I don't wanna go pop. I got too much soul, rhythm and blues, or in beat. You see, oh, let's go. Rapper, rap is not pop if you call it that and stop. He was always a hybrid rapper, more pop than actual rap. 
Whenever he freestyled together with other top tier rappers, they used to giggle at his amateurish bars and weak rapping skills. They didn't take him serious. They thought he was soft, some even called him a sellout, which is what going pop more or less implied. And his commercial feud with 50 Cent was more or less a clash between the quote unquote real hip hop and pop rap. The importance of certain elements in the culture, for example the main focus being lyricism, kinda got lost during that era. I mean even before that people thought hip hop was starting to get a little watered down. Kanye stands love to share some of his freestyle performances to show that he's actually a skilled rapper. But if you actually know his music or do your research, you would find out that every quote unquote freestyle he spit are verses from songs on his albums. And these were most of the time written by somebody else. This is what it sounds like when Kanye is really freestyling. I can make shit rhyme if I'm feel like even if I don't. So I just might not. Cause I don't want and I'm just gonna freestyle for the first time. I kill y'all niggas on that Liverpool shit. Nobody was taking him seriously. Everybody was trying to figure out a way to get Kanye to give up his beats without wanting to hear rap. He was definitely an amazing producer, maybe top five, even if most of his recent work is co-produced by a handful other producers. But no one was really impressed by his rapping skills. Jay-Z even told him to give up on rapping and to focus more on production, cause that's where his real talent is. The problem here is that his stance try to add him to the GOAT conversation while dismissing all the criteria and expectations that we had to determine who's the king. And they act like his rapping skills are top tier. Kanye gets outrhymed almost every time he does a song with other rappers. Even by some of the worst ones in history. I can't even name you a handful of songs on which he outrhymed everyone else. I mean even though he gets help with his writing. The greatest rapper ever who got outrhymed the most in history. Back in the day you would get dissed for getting killed on your own songs. But Kanye made himself a career of that. Remember that song he did with the legends Keras One, Nas and Rakim? In 2007 when they were quote unquote washed up old rappers who got a chance to rap with the most hyped up rapper at that moment in time? If you go on YouTube you can see people cutting Kanye's verse off the song. And the version without him got 5 times more views than the original one. Which is hilarious. The most popular rapper getting removed from his own song. He got out rhymed by everybody and people would rather hear irrelevant rappers than the most popular rapper of all time. Same thing happened with Rick Ross on Devil in a Dress. It was like that moment, you know, when I thought about taking Nicki's verse off a of monster because I knew people would say that was the best verse on the best hip hop album of all time, or arguably top 10 albums of all time, right? Mm -hmm. And I would do all that work, eight months of work on Dark Fantasy, and people to this day would say to me, oh, my favorite thing was Nicki Minaj verse. I kill y'all niggas on that Liverpool shit. Not too long ago, we had whack ass Fabio Foreign basically embarrassing Kanye on his own records. He outshined them on his own song, Off the Grids, and then again on City of Gods. It was better than every Kanye verse on Donda. And Fabio Foreign is a bottom tier rapper when it comes to lyrical ability and rapping skills in general. Even though he has people helping him out with his lyrics. I mean, just take a look at the credited writers on his albums. Basically on every project. It got worse with My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, that Kanye stands rank as the best rap album of all time. It had a shit ton of writers who helped him out. Even Talib Kweli, one of his closest friends at one point, exposed him on Instagram for using ghostwriters after he dissed him on Drink Champs. These are some of the ghostwriters that he named. Lupe Fiasco, Saiha the Prince, Partisan Fontaine, Pusha T, Consequence, Rhymefest, Fonts with Bentley, GOC, Malik Youssef and John Legend. And that's just scratching the surface. He had way more writers throughout his career, whether it's credited or uncredited. I mean, even his ex-friend Kid Cudi called him out at one point for being fake and boasting to be top 5 while having 30 people writing for him. And Kid Cudi was also in that quote unquote fake hip hop and pop rap bracket. So that alone speaks volumes. Even Drake, who got exposed for using writers and ghostwriters, wrote for Kanye at one point. Even battling wise or overall when it comes to lyrically defending yourself, Kanye has always been the victim in the game. He gets slapped around by every rapper. Drake, Hobson, Sire the Prince, Consequence, Beanie Siegel, Ray J, Ice Cube, Master P, Cameron, 50 Cent, Rico Reckless, Papoose, Lord Jamar, J. Cole, Talib Kweli, and even fucking Soldier Boy. And forget about rappers, he's losing beefs and crying against random skinny white boys like Pete Davidson. I mean, none of us take Pete serious or see him as a man. He's a little boy to us, but manages to embarrass Kanye every time they have a back and forth together. Rappers are supposed to be wordsmiths. And as someone who's viewed as a Christ-like figure in the rap game, he would assume that he could defend himself with words. I mean, that's what rappers usually do, right? 
they are modern day poets and don't just get bodied by random strangers in the audience. Rap is almost like a sport. Just like in basketball, you don't see someone like a Michael Jordan get defeated by a random guy who doesn't even know what he's doing. It shouldn't be that easy to outrap the quote unquote best rapper of all time. Is the title really worth nothing to you? Can anyone just be the best without any outstanding rapping skills? Thousands of rappers can outrap him, let's be honest. I mean, the only thing he has is impact on the game, beats, and a discography that is not for everyone. I mean, me personally, I'm not a big fan of his music. He himself admitted that he doesn't listen to rap like that. And the same applies to his fans. And I don't even want to mention all the dumb shit he says all the time. Like slavery was a choice, for example. I just don't see how the biggest victim in hip-hop is the GOAT. He has so much attack surface you could make an hour-long diss track without getting repetitive. All he can do as an MC is to send Pusha T to handle his beefs. But Kanye stands will tell you that he's still better than him. Drake basically spit in his face by sleeping with Kim Kardashian's entire family. Including Kim of course. And Kanye was still hiding behind Pusha T, scared of a bell. And overall Kanye is just taking way too many L's to be part of the GOAT conversation. And Drake was never part of it. In 10 out of 10 cases, Andre would destroy him, whether it's on a feature, a live battle, or a battle with diss tracks. And he also made the better hip-hop records. Anyway, Playboy Cardi is in the finals, ladies and gentlemen. He defeated ASAP Rocky, who I admit is not the best rapper in the world, but way better than Cardi in my opinion. Which means he's the top 64 rapper of all time, according to this tournament. I see absolutely no problem with it. That's what I'm talking about. This shit means something to me, man. Both Kanye's and Playboy Cardi's stand base clashed in the finals, and we had a nice head to head race for four hours. And in the end, Kanye won by just a few votes. But guess what? Cardi almost won the bracket. His stance shared the link to the poll on multiple sites so they can manipulate the votes. And Cardi was about to win while my fans were inactive. So I reshared the link and reminded my fans to submit their votes. Of course, without telling them who they should vote for. Cause it's supposed to be fair. No standbase should be able to manipulate the tournaments. And my fanbase is fairly mixed with both new school and old school fans. It's not just a cult of stands that would die for their favorite artist. So yeah, Kanye made it to the top 32 while Playboy Cardi made it to the top 64. So congrats, you defeated cancer. Bracket 31. Capadonna vs J-Rock. Heavily disagree with your ranking. J-Rock is a CT lyricist and his music isn't all that great either. I mean, just recently we got the news that Kendrick Lamar has been ghostwriting lyrics for him in the background. Capadonna, on the other hand, is a lyrical assassin and a member of the Wu-Tang Clan. He was skilled enough to outshine Ghostface Killer on his own song, along with You God and Master Killer, and since then we got tons of great verses from him. I mean, Ghost is probably the best member of the clan. We don't really see too many people outshining him on tracks. He even destroyed Kendrick Lamar on Purple Hearts recently, which was on his new album. Even though Ghost is over 20 years past his prime, and Kendrick is at his lyrical peak according to his stance. But Capadonna outshining him, and Kendrick failing to do so, just shows you the gap in skill between them. Prime against prime, I mean. We battled each other one day on stage. And shit, like the whole clan. So Kappa took the took home the buck fifty, he took home the money. Anyway, Capadonna's verse on Winter Wars is one of the greatest ever. I don't think J-Rock could do something remotely close, or outshine a Wu-Tang member on their own song. Ice Cube vs Cars, of course we gotta go with Cube. Keith Murray, also better than Opio from Hieroglyphics and Souls of Mischief. McGruff, 100% more talented than Rich Homie Kwan. The legend Teela Rock, superior to Kirk Knight. Winnie Pass from Jedi Mind Tricks vs Guap Dead, of course we gotta go with Winnie Pass. Next, Big Prodigy from South Central Cartel over Rasko Dash. Agree with this one too, but I don't think Arabian Prince is better than Reef the Lost Cause. He only appeared on one song on Straight Outta Compton, one of the weaker songs actually, and then he left the group to pursue a solo career, which was far less successful. I overall prefer Juju Mob and Army of the Pharaohs music over anything Arabian Prince has ever put out. And when we're talking about skills, flow and lyricism, Reef is also more advanced in my opinion. But I agree with your ranking for Dave East and Tajay, also the one with MC8 and Lecrae. Doja Cat and MF Grimm, Shark G from Digital Underground and Pill, Positive K and Whack Ass Lil Darky, Big Crit and David Banner, Most Def and Paul Wall, but not with 2 chains over Charlie Tuna from Jurassic 5. Come on now. Round 2. 
Cube, definitely better than J-Rock. Keith Murray versus McGruff is debatable when we're talking about skills, but catalog-wise, McGruff didn't really put out much music. Only one album and a few features. So I'm fine with picking Keith Murray. Vinnie Paz, far more advanced than Tila Rock. Disagree with Arabian Prince over Big Prodigy, cause like I said, his solo work ain't that great. People voted for him because he has NWA attached to his name. But he didn't contribute much to the group to be honest. South Central Cartel made way better music than Arabian Prince. MC8, definitely better than Dave East. MF Grimm vs Shark G from Digital Underground, debatable. Skill wise, definitely MF Grimm. Impact and music wise, definitely Shark G. He's a legend. He was big on the west coast and Tupac probably wouldn't have the career he had without him. But MF Grimm would have smoked him in a battle. Big Crit, definitely better than Positive K. And Most Def, most definitely better than 2 Chains. Round 3 Cube vs Keith Murray. Cube takes us easily. Really? Arabian Prince? Again? Vinny Paz is a lyrical beast. He got everything. Punchlines, wordplay, storytelling, a dope flow, an amazing catalog, and also the third largest vocabulary in hip-hop. On top of that he had Stoop, the enemy of mankind, one of the best producers ever, in his group Jedi Mind Tricks, which means the production was also on point. Just one album they made together is superior to anything Arabian Prince has ever put out. In his solo career, I mean. His work with NWA was insignificant, knowing that he wasn't part of the biggest songs that everybody got in their playlists. He got neglected by the group and was seen as an unnecessary fifth wheel. Doesn't even appear in the NWA biopic, if I remember correctly. They treated him like a filler character. Vinnie Paz should have definitely won this. But anyway, next matchup. MC8 vs Shark G. Have to also go with MC8. And lastly, Mighty Most Def vs Big Crit. Crit doesn't stand a chance. Semi-finals. Oh wow, we got the Arabian Prince finally out of the tournament. It only took us another NWA member to get rid of him. I mean, he got in the top 128. Wouldn't even put him in my top 1000. Respectfully. Which means Cube is now in the finals. I agree with most Def over MC8. And also with your pick in the last round. Cube is definitely superior to most Def overall. Of course not in every category, but if we're basing this off accomplishments in hip-hop for example, then Cube is the victor. All the work he put in with NWA, his solo work, his collaborations with Dub C and Mac 10 when he was part of the group Westside Connection, but Mostef has an incredible catalog too. I'm a huge fan of both. Black Star, Black on both sides, everything he released until the ecstatic was just amazing to me. Of course Cube has the bigger hits and more albums in general, but Mostef's catalog is a little underappreciated in my opinion. Skill wise it's debatable. I think in his prime Cube could have definitely destroyed Mostef in a battle. I don't know if Yasin could make a better diss track than No Vaseline. But Cube's skills definitely worsened over the years, to the point where he lost against Common Sense. Even with Westside Connection backing him up. So most Def could have probably destroyed him during those days in my opinion. I think lyrically and flow wise he might be superior to Cube. But impact wise definitely not. And I also prefer the most recent Ice Cube album over the new Black Star album. So yeah, Cube is now in the top 32 and most Def in the top 64. Bracket 22. Bro, you done made a mistake, boy. You done fucked up, man. We gotta get busy, though, man. Can we get busy, man, please, without you fucking up? PMD from EPMD versus Miss Jade. Definitely have to go with Parrish. Obi Trice versus Shah Rukh, the first female MC who was part of the legendary group Funky 4 Plus One. She was far more important to the culture, but her rapping skills are very outdated. Hip hop was on preschool level back then. And she can't come close to Obi Trice, even though I always thought that he was whack. But it would hurt my soul to pick Obi in this round, cause he used to ruin everybody's songs whenever I got featured. And overall he just got way too much push and exposure through his affiliation with Shady Records. But I agree with your rankings for Lloyd Banks and Soldier Slim, Five Talk from A Tribe Called Quest and Lil Mo, but Trouble is not on Mr. Motherfucking XY's level if we're talking about rapping skills and overall creativity. Quelle Chris is a better lyricist than Apache, but his music is just not my cup of tea. Fonte from Little Brother vs Bahamadia. Both great rappers, but Fonte is a superior lyricist. Same with Sage Francis, who almost has twice the vocabulary of Lazybone. And he was also battling at one point. 
he's most likely the most skilled MC in general. Now that being said, his music is terrible. Bone Thugs and Harmony has a million times better catalog. Sage never had a classic in his life and didn't really leave a mark on the game compared to Lazybone. Without Bone Thugs and Harmony, melodic rap probably wouldn't be as successful as it is right now. So again, you can make arguments for both. I'm fine with either one of them. Royce to 59 definitely better than Capone. IDK vs PD Pablo. Music wise, definitely PD Pablo. And next, Cannabis vs Cassius. Cassius. You gonna be a beast when you get out there, man. Trust me, homie. My ears don't lie to me. Who? Bro, like where did M find all these shitty artists? Cannabis wins this by a landslide. Come on, bro. What's up, fam? <laughs> you know this. Wyclef Jean vs Kingpin Skinny Pimp. They both make great music, but Wyclef has dope songs with the Fugees and also great solo material. He's more talented in my opinion. Me and him actually have a little bit of history together. I did a rant video on him back in 2016 for calling Young Thug the modern day Tupac. That was during a time when every asshole who came in the game had something negative to say about the deceased legends. It felt like almost every week that a new rapper popped up out of nowhere that claims to be better than Tupac and Biggie. And Hip Hop Universe was a Tupac channel back then. Me and thousands of other Pac fans felt like it was weird that Wyclef, one of the rivals of Tupac, made such a comparison. My rant video on him went viral, and Wyclef actually responded to it in an interview. He offered to do a boxing match with me, which is hilarious. He said it jokingly and I think he didn't take it serious. Which is great because I kinda regret that I did the video on him. Although the first one wasn't really as offensive as the second one I released. That was after he doubled down and said that Young Thug is as revolutionary as Tupac. He basically explained his point and made it even worse. And Young Thug actually boosted his ego with it and bragged about it on social media. Some of my earlier videos definitely crossed the line and went too far. I was just wild and way too aggressive back in the day. I think I've matured quite a bit since then. I deleted that video a while ago and feel sorry for everything I said about Wyclef. This has been bothering me for years now and I'm glad that I could finally get this off my chest. Years later, I see cannabis. We shake hands and it's all love and I'm still a big fan of his. Pop Smoke vs Wild Child from Loot Pack. I think I would pick Pop Smoke just because of his voice and how he impacted the game in such a short amount of time. He was active for less than a handful of years, but still the face of Brooklyn Drill. Since his death, I've heard dozens of rappers who try to sound like him. Pop Smoke's music just stuck out more in my opinion. AG vs Smooth the Hustler. Both great MCs with great music, but AG is lyrically superior, especially in terms of punchlines. Him and Showbiz made some of the best sounding East Coast hip hop anthems ever. LP vs Lachette. Definitely LP. Lil Baby vs Royal Flush. You're definitely tripping with this one. Lil Baby's music is trash and generic, and skill wise, he's mediocre at best. A lot of people say he's an underrated lyricist. You guys really need to check out more hip hop. I mean, some call him the best lyricist of this generation, which is ironic because he has the fifth smallest vocabulary in hip hop. A very small and repetitive subject matter, the same rhyme schemes in every song, and overall, it just sounds like he's creating the same song over and over again from scratch. Nothing about him impresses me. Weak delivery, annoying voice, mediocre at best punchlines, boring personality, one-dimensional beat selection, and overall it just feels like you don't miss out on anything if you skip his catalog. I personally would have picked Royal Flush, both skill and music wise. He is underappreciated on all levels. And of course he can lyrically defend himself. He had a nice back and forth with Mr. Cheeks from the Lost Boys. And he even dissed the notorious B.I.G. for the King of New York title. Lil Baby can't mess with him. His debut album, Ghetto Millionaire, already clears his whole catalog. PMD definitely better than Obi Trice, but Lloyd Banks is not better than Five Dog in my opinion. The Funky Diabetic was better in every aspect except maybe punchlines and wordplay. Even the worst project he put out is better than Lloyd Banks at his best. He has at least four undeniable classics and always had sick verses. Impact wise there's also no comparison. But in a battle, prime against prime, I can see why I would pick Lloyd Banks. Apache definitely better than Trouble, but Lazy Bone is not on Fonte's level. Royce of 59 definitely superior to IDK. Cannabis. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Feel that? Versus White Left Jean. Interesting matchup, as they both had a beef together at one point. Both skilled MCs with nice catalogs, but I think White Left would agree with me when I say Cannabis is the better rapper. Come on, what's up, fam? 
How you doing? All right. Never forget about that. Cause that's all we got. Pop Smoke is not a better rapper than AG. Come on now. AG would have lyrically dismantled him in a battle, or would have the better verse bar for bar if they ever rapped on a boom bap beat. And when talking about catalog, I prefer Showbiz and AG and all those dope songs they did with DITC over anything Pop Smoke has ever released. Even though he has some crazy songs too. Not saying that Pop Smoke is a bad rapper, but AG is just insanely underrated. I can't name you one whack verse by him in his prime. He always held his own when he rapped with some of the greats of this culture. Punchlines, flows, energy, everything was on point. So he definitely should have won this in my opinion. Also disappointing is the result of the matchup between LP and Lil Baby. Knowing that LP is a far superior MC with a vocabulary twice as large as Lil Baby's. And a discography that is superior on all levels. Not just generic and repetitive drip music that makes use of the same boring trap beats. LP gave us great solo albums and classic group projects with Company Flow and Run The Jewels. I can't even name you three Lil Baby songs that I genuinely enjoy. Even though I check out everything that he drops. I mean, let's ignore the music aspect for a second. You really believe he can outrap LP? Are we even listening to the same people? But whatever. Round 3. BMD definitely better than Lloyd Banks, Lazy Bone over Apache, Cannabis. Come on, bring it in. There. No, no, wait. You put Royce over Cannabis? I mean, to be fair, Cannabis' new music is terrible. Ever since that disaster battle, he became whack. And this is coming from a fan. But Prime Cannabis is superior to Royce in every aspect except maybe flow, cadence, versatility and maybe delivery. Beat selection you could argue as well. Which means Cannabis is superior in terms of vocabulary, punchlines, metaphors, wordplay, content, rhyme schemes, freestyles, battle rhymes and overall the complexity of the lyrics. You could also say that Cannabis impacted the battle rap scene more than him. And I personally prefer his older music over Royce's entire catalog. They even battled at one point, which I actually covered in a full beef analysis. After Eminem and Cannabis had that little beef going on, Royce wanted to jump in and lost the battle in the end. Afterwards he cried for help and support from his group Slaughterhouse, dragging more people into a pointless beef that he started, cause Cannabis never really had a problem with him. Royce dissed him first and made Joe Budden, Crooked Eye and Joel Ortiz jump in for help. And they still lost. 4 against 1. He also lost against Lupe Fiasco just recently. And then again against Mickey Fax. Only battle he ever won was against D12. I think rapping wise, Cannabis is on a different level. We're talking about Mr. 10,000 Boss here. He outshined almost every rapper he rapped with. Including Redman, Common, Nas, AZ, Foxy Brown, LL Cool J, DMX, A+, Master P, Mr. Cheeks, Method Man, Big Pun, Cameron, Noriega, Pharaoh Manch, Killer Priest, Raskas, Corrupt, and he also battled the Wu-Tang Clan, LL of course, Eminem, The Slaughterhouse Group, Beanie Siegel, Meth Hoffa, Disaster, and the list goes on and on. Most old school rappers in your top 50 have said that Cannabis is one of the illest rappers ever, including his enemies. And even the quote unquote new school rappers like Absol and J. Cole, they all said that he was the best at one point. You could of course argue that Royce makes the better music, but in my opinion, none of his albums come close to Rip the Jacker, My Club The Curriculum, 2000 BC and Melatonin Magic. Anyway, I will just do this, and this, and everything should be fine. Oh, bring it in, bring it in! <laughs> Start from the bottom, now we're here! Yeah. And yes, Pop Smoke is definitely a better rapper than Lil Baby. Let's move on to the semi-finals. PMD over Lazybone is more than agreeable, Royce 59 also better than Pop Smoke, even though I just talked shit about him for 5 minutes straight, and I'm also glad that he won the finals. Royce is indeed more advanced as far as rapping skills go. PMD is amazing though. EPMD is actually one of my favorite duos of all time, and I also love their solo work. But something is still bothering me about this bracket, and I don't know what it is. Come on, there he is. <laughs> anyway, that was it for part 4 of this tournament. The next part will be about the finals, in which we bring all the brackets together and rank the winners and runner-ups. Check out the previous parts if you haven't already, and stay tuned for part 5. See you in the next video.